We are joined now in this segment by Dr. Russell Blaylock, MD. He is a nationally recognized board certified neurosurgeon who pioneered some of the most common forms of brain surgery used today. He's a health practitioner and author of numerous books and scientific studies, including Excitotoxins, The Taste That Kills, and Health and Nutrition Secrets That Can Save Your Life. He has exposed how MSG and aspartame can cause diseases of the nervous system, and he exposed the H1N1 vaccine scam. Dr. Blaylock writes a monthly newsletter called the Blaylock Wellness Report, and he can be found online at RussellBlaylockMD.com. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Blaylock. I don't know if you've been following that the president has put out now a new plan, the plan to protect our children and our communities by reducing gun violence. And there's a huge focus in here among these 23 new executive orders on uh, mental health, increasing mental health services. And one of the things they're going to do is they, they've referred to the CDC as a scientific agency, and they're going to give them $10 million to do gun violence research. Why do you think, why do you think that is? Well, the CDC has uh, clearly demonstrated itself as not a scientific organization. Uh, it's demonstrated it's nothing more than the ministry of propaganda for the state. Uh, when we look to their reactions and, and uh, so-called scientific output on fluoridation, on vaccines, uh, on all these issues, uh, it's purely political. It's not scientific. In fact, it defies the scientific evidence. And, and they go to great lengths and great measures to go against the science. Uh, they're in the hands of the pharmaceutical companies, uh, which is working directly with the government uh, to have these people forced to take vaccinations. And then it'll be psychotropic medications and it'll be forced uh, uh, psychological evaluations to put them on these medications. So it's, it's unending. But I wouldn't trust uh, the CDC. They've shown themselves not to be trustworthy. Definitely. And it's interesting that you mention the psychotropic medications because in here it actually specifically calls for research on gun violence and violent video games and how firearms are used in violent deaths. But it doesn't say anything about these uh, psychotropic medications and the correlations between antipsychotic medications and these mass murders, mass violence. Actually, uh, they, they say they're going to refer all of these young people to treatment, is what they say. Uh, what do you think they mean by treatment? Well, I think it's going to be forced medication that's going to be the major treatment. And, and as you said, if you look at the, the really uh, uh, mass shootings in schools, virtually all of them are connected to the use of psychotropic medications. And the concerns uh, with the psychotropic-type uh, medications is the fluorinated uh, medications, like the SSRI medications. Uh, which, if you look in the physician's desk reference, which tells you about complication side effects, all these medications, the, the uh, side effect that's mentioned most of, that we should be concerned about is homicidal tendencies, homicidal uh, ideation. Now we're thinking about killing people uh, and suicide. And when you look at the soldiers coming from Afghanistan and Iraq, they were put on a fluoridated anti-malarial medication. Uh, which the uh, uh, PDR uh, sig uh, significantly warns physicians that this is associated with hostility, uh, homicide, homicidal ideation, and suicide. Well, what are the soldiers doing? They're returning uh, from combat under enormous stress, put on these medications. They go home, and uh, some of them are killing their families and committing suicide. Same thing happened to Canadian soldiers. Uh, they had an elite unit that was placed on this very same anti uh, malarial medication, and there was so much violence they had to disband the entire unit. Now this was an elite unit uh, uh, that uh, this happened to. So we have a, a extensive evidence that these SSR medications are producing uh, 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 in certain individuals uh, homicidal tendencies. Yet his answer is, well, we need to have four psychiatric evaluation of every man, woman, and child in America and forcibly pl placed on these medications. Well, we could expect more homicides and more suicides if he does. Uh, and of course, the pharmaceutical companies have made absolutely hundreds of billions of dollars on these medications, some of their biggest sellers. Uh, so they have a lot to gain by it. And the CDC has been shown uh, to be connected to the pharmaceutical companies financially. Uh, they act as their protectors. They act as their mouthpiece. And so, uh, you know, I'm not surprised at this at all. But 
you know, the other thing people need to understand is that the Soviet Union switched from its gulag system, in other words, its mass prisons, uh, they switched to psychiatric units uh, as their, their new gulag, psychiatric uh, gulags. And so they put their uh, so-called enemies of the state, those who disagreed with the communist government, in mental institutes and forced uh, them to take these psychotropic medications with the idea of making them uh, uh, enter a state in which they could no longer think logically. Uh, then they're helpless and they're controlled by the state. Some were converted by these drugs uh, to do, virtually become uh, agents of the state. But uh, in the Soviet Union, what they did, they just declared anybody who disagreed with the, the state as mentally ill. That was a definition, because how could anyone be opposed to utopia? Therefore, that's uh, prima facie evidence. We're, that you, we're seeing yeah. that again today with the Department of Homeland Security saying that liberty lovers are uh, mentally ill. Like if, if you disagree with the government, basically, you have a mental illness. We're seeing that actually today. And, and it's interesting you say that because in this report, it actually says, quote, research on gun violence is critical public health research that gives all Americans the information that they need. But the information they're not including in here is anything to do with the correlation between psychotropics and these mass mass shootings and actually it goes on to, to specifically say they're going to support young people and individuals between the ages of 16 and 25 when we know that the FDA upgraded their black box warning on these SSRI antidepressant medications to that specific age group because there was a higher increase of suicide and we know that in a lot of these mass shootings that have been highly publicized such as Columbine such as the Aurora shooting and this new one in Newtown, these people were all in that age group and they were all, all these suspected shooters and shooters were in that age group and they were all on these, medic, these kinds of medications. So it's, it's pretty amazing they're saying they're giving us all the information when they're really giving us the exact opposite of that. It seems like propaganda. Well, it's pure propaganda. And what we know in terms of neuroscience is that the, the prefrontal lobes, uh, that is the front part of the brain, is what controls uh, our ability to uh, be uh, uh, operated within a society, in other words, to resist doing destructive social acts. And that uh, as a period of adolescence is when that part of the brain is not fully developed and it, uh, that person's at the greatest risk of becoming uh, a risk to society. Well, in certain individuals, they have very little development at that stage. And if you put them on these drugs, it further impairs development uh, further impairs their ability to control their emotions. And so they tend to act impulsively uh, in a, uh, like a psychopath. That's what happens to the psychopath. The psychopath has no emotions. Uh, they feel uh, nothing towards their victims. They have no shame. They have no conscience. And the reason is because that uh, prefrontal cortex of the brain is dysfunctional. Uh, well, this is what you're, you're probably doing with these drugs. You're also producing uh, abnormalities in the development and maturation of that part of the brain. So in a certain number of people, you're going to uh, push them into uh, psychopathic behavior. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. We're all going to be spending $10 million for the CDC to write a paper on how all these shootings are caused by a video game. And they're not going to talk for even two seconds about these medications. But uh, switching gears, I want to also ask you about this flu, this flu pandemic, because it seems like the media is really stirring up a huge panic right now that we all need to rush out and get our flu vaccination right away. There's going to be a shortage. We're all going to possibly die from the flu. Meanwhile, the CDC has actually come out and said it's not even, it's only moderately effective. It's not even really effective. Why would we all rush out and get something that's not even going to treat, even at the most basic common sense level? Why would anybody go out and get something that's not even going to help them to cure the thing it's supposedly supposed to fix? Well, you know, if you look at the uh, 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 mortality and morbidity weekly report, which is the main report by the CDC on the flu, the latest one, says that the vaccine's not uh, moderately effective, it says modestly effective. Wow. They just keep changing the adjectives, huh? Not even effective in a third percent wow. uh, people. So two-thirds it has no effectiveness. Now, there's, there's even more shocking news, which the public has never heard of, vast majority of physicians have never heard of. It came out last year and was reported uh, as a series of articles in the journal Virology, the chief journal for uh, virus. And what this article found, what this study found, uh, it was done in the Netherlands, 
was that children who have yearly uh, flu vaccine are unable to produce cell-mediated immunity that protects them against uh, pandemic viruses and protects them against mutating viruses. So if you, if you, <laughs> oh, wow. they cannot produce these cells. Now these are called nonspecific CD8 uh, uh, cited uh, tropic uh, uh, lymphocytes. And what they do is they kill viruses uh, of any kind. Uh, now that's a major protection against pandemics in the world. Well, they found that if you were getting the flu vaccine every year, you cannot mount that immunity. And therefore, for instance, if the bird flu comes, and that's one they tested, you cannot develop immunity against it. If you develop H1N1 exposure, you cannot develop uh, immunity against it because it paralyzes this, this particular type of immune system. Uh, no one's talking about that. But this is a major protection, protection against pandemics. Now, let's say 90% of the children starting at six months of age every year gets this vaccine and a pandemic does hit, those children are gonna have uh, severe damage and a lot of them are gonna die unnecessarily. Children who have never been vaccinated with these flu vaccines are gonna be able to have uh, very mild reactions to it. This has been done. You know, the ferret is an animal that we use to test viruses because their immune system is very much like uh, humans. And so all viruses are tested. And they found in ferrets, the ones who had just natural flu infections every year, not the vaccine, that when they were exposed to the bird flu, they had very mild reactions. Their brain was barely affected at all or not at all, and their lungs looked pretty good. But the ones who got seasonal flu vaccines every year uh, in these ferrets had devastating brain destruction and devastating lung destruction. So the wow. fact these children are getting these vaccines every year and being frightened into it actually is making them infinitely more vulnerable uh, to these pandemic viruses. This happened with H1N1. I don't know if people remember, but with H1N1, the Canadian uh, virologist reported that people who had uh, taken the seasonal flu vaccine actually not only had a higher rate of infection by the virus, but had a worse reaction, were more likely to be hospitalized and more likely to die. Wow. The ones who ever had a flu vaccine were quite resistant to these damaging effects. Now, that's, that's big news. That's, that's huge news. It's, it's very much like uh, the chickenpox vaccination being linked to all of these cases of shingles. It kills your natural immunities to shingles to give all these people weakened chickenpox virus. And after the chickenpox virus came out and was mandated, I think what it, shingles cases went up 90% in the following three years. And they knew that when they made it, they were able to come in and make two vaccines and make double the money off of it. It's just, it's amazing. And you have all of these institutes coming out and different organizations. We have like the Institute of Medicine came out and they, they reviewed the children's vaccine schedule here in America. And they said that it is great and that the benefits outweigh the risks. And we also have the American Academy of Pedi Pediatrics going on record to say we need to put some Marisol back in, back in our vaccinations. Have you, have you read about that? Yes, and if, if you look at the largest study done on the effectiveness of flu vaccine, which is done by the highly prestigious uh, Cochrane uh, database, they looked at 51 major studies, over 260,000 children. And what they found is children less than two years of old uh, two years of age, the flu vaccine had no better effectiveness than a placebo. Now, <laughs> wow. Children over two years of age, at best, a third of them developed antibody titers uh, to the virus, but that's still not protection. You see, and this is one of the tricks they use, and this is how the CDC works as a propaganda network. They don't say the flu vaccine protects you against the flu. What, they, what they're saying is that you develop antibodies that should protect you mm. against the flu. Semantics. But may, because that's not your major protection against viruses. It's cellular immunity. And as I pointed out, the studies show that uh, the vaccine actually powerfully suppresses uh, cellular immunity. And cellular immunity is what protects you against cancer as well and degenerative brain disorders. So then you'll have to rely on the medical community even more. 
Yeah, well, they've been pushing, the CDC really pushing. They have huge media campaigns for this that they've put out, uh, pushing flu vaccines on pregnant women now. They didn't used to give vaccines to pregnant women, but they're pushing it on them. And what I have never understood, even at the most logical sense on this, is that on their own website, the CDC says that children six months of age or younger are not to get the flu vaccine. So how is it that an unborn fetus being exposed to the vaccine is somehow okay? It makes well, no sense. Uh if you actually look at the research instead of the nonsense propaganda put out by CDC and these people promoting the vaccines, if you actually look at the research, it clearly shows that if you stimulate immunity uh, during pregnancy or shortly thereafter, it can produce devastating abnormal development of the brain. Uh, in fact, it drastically increases the incidence of uh, autism, and schizophrenia both. And I warned before on, on Alex's program that if you start uh, vaccinating pregnant women with multiple vaccines, you're going to see a dramatic increase in the incidence of schizophrenia. Well, schizophrenia reaches its peak uh, during adolescence. So there's going to be antidepressants. <laughs> there's going to be a time span between the vaccination program and the dramatic rise in schizophrenia. And That's they're going to do just like autism. They're going to say, well, we don't know why schizophrenia has increased so dramatically uh, in the last uh, uh, five or ten years. Exactly. But the research clearly shows you could produce schizophrenia by uh, immune stimulation with vaccines during pregnancy and shortly afterward. Well, children are getting massive numbers of vaccines during the most intense period of brain development, uh, which if you look in the scientific literature and actually look at the science, that's insane. That's yeah, absolutely sounds insane. like eugenics to me. Well, it's worse than that because you're damaging the developing brain of hundreds of millions of children, which is going to change them for the rest of their life. They're going to have trouble thinking. They're going to be uh, uh, socially uh, uh, disrupted, and uh, it's going to be permanent. You, you, it's going to be very difficult to, to alter that and change it. Uh, but parents are not looking to people who know the literature. They're, they're looking to people who are just uh, listening to propaganda. I mean, your pediatrician, for the most part, never researches this. He gets material from his union, the American Academy of Pediatrics, which is a union. And exactly. they're tied to pharmaceutical companies. I've done yeah. research into the American Academy of Pediatrics, and a lot of their fellows actually work for organizations like Monsanto and Dow, and it's and pretty horrifying. Now, you, you mentioned the uh, uh, American and pediatrics saying they want to put mercury back in the vaccines because it's safe. Well, it's nonsense. There are over 2,000 studies that were done years ago that showed that the mercury uh, is a, a, a tremendous brain toxin. And I've written about it in numerous articles published in the literature. Others have. And so th their response is, well, it's the methyl Mercury that's it's dangerous. methyl, not ethyl. Like that somehow I, makes it better. The amount of mercury in the brain is higher with ethyl mercury than it is with methyl mercury. That's and what it's, I've read in the studies. Yeah. And it's converted to uh, a type of mercury, inorganic mercury, which never leaves the brain, which is the most damaging part of all mercury, and it is consistently shown to produce aggressiveness and abnormal development of the brain and chronic inflammation of the brain that can last a lifetime. Now, these, the dose of the mercury uh, in these studies is producing these effects is in nanograms. So we're talking about extremely small concentrations of mercury doing that. Now, how did they justify the mercury being safe? They used some phony studies, which were sh uh, shown and, and pointed out by the people that are real experts in mercury to be nothing but uh, uh, concocted studies that were totally misinterpreted when actually the study said that it uh, impaired the brain, uh, the developing brain of children. So the, the American Academy of Pediatrics, like the CDC, has become a propaganda network. It, it's, it's no longer has anything to do with science. Uh, uh, they're phonies. One of their other recommendations had to do with the fact that organic food is not healthier for you. And this is a quote from one of the co-authors of their, quote, study. He said that it was not better for you because there have been no long-term studies to show that eating less pesticide is healthier for you. That's actually what he said. So. And that, uh, you know, I wrote one of my recent newsletters on pesticides and foods and the effect uh, of pesticides, herbicides 
on the tremendous increase in, in hematologic malignancies, which I've been astounded how fast they've increased. They've just increased enormously. And when you look at the variables of what could have changed to produce this, this uh, tremendous increase in lymphomas and lymphosarcomas, leukemias, the number one culprit is herbicides and pesticides. When you look at the dramatic increase in neurological diseases, particularly in the United States, it's directly connected to pesticide herbicide exposure. So it's just another example of how they defy the science and they become a ministry of propaganda. They're lying to the American public. Definitely. Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's like saying there's no long-term study on setting myself in fire and running around in traffic is better for me or not. There's, well, there are long-term term studies. There's short-term, there's long-term studies. So they're lying. They, they know they're just they're outright lying. lying. Definitely. Well, actually, I just saw yesterday the FDA approved a new flu vaccine, and this one says it's made out of insect viruses and recombinant DNA technology. Doesn't that sound like something straight out of a B-grade science fiction movie? Well, you talk about lack of long-term studies. None of that has had long-term studies. Most of this stuff is being fast-tracked. That means they don't do adequate study. There's zero long-term studies. They never do long-term studies on just childhood vaccinations. The longest the study they do is, is a month. Uh, a so month, wow. They, do long-term studies because they know what they'll find. Uh, and uh, many of the neurological diseases, in fact, do not appear for as much as four to five years after uh, the vaccination has been done. In fact, one of the big secrets of mercury toxicity is that the brain damaging effects can be delayed as much as five or six years. So most of the studies are cut off before that time, so they won't show the damage. It's all manipulation of the data. It's amazing. Well, I just have one last question for you I'm curious about. We here at InfoWars a lot of times get ridiculed for our beliefs and putting this information out there. And we're just, I was just curious, what are some of the ways that the mainstream media and the, the medical community has ridiculed you for coming out against these things and speaking the truth? Well, I don't pay any attention to them. You know, the science is on my side. None of them argue directly with me. Uh, I've, I'm published uh, uh, in the, the literature in the scientific literature. I can back up everything I say. Uh, for instance, uh, they make all these statements uh, uh, off it. For instance, says, well, there, there's, there's no mechanism to explain how vaccinations could cause uh, autism. And then uh, uh, later in the interview, he says, well, I don't know anything about neurology. I, you'll have to ask a neurologist. Well, then how can he the mechanism? I've described the mechanism in the literature. I've published it. Uh, and it's well known, it's well demonstrated mechanism by which vaccines could produce this effect. So, you know, you have these people who know absolutely nothing about uh, the brain, the effect of systemic immune stimulation on the brain, uh, about brain development, uh, about toxicity of these various uh, uh, agents like aluminum and mercury, and, and they're lying. It's just nothing but pure propaganda and, and outright lies. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Russell, Dr. Blaylock. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. And if you or somebody you know gets vaccines and believes the CDC's propaganda, you need to get the greater good. It is a in-depth analysis of what the medical tyranny of vaccines really are doing in this country, doing to our children, and you need to pick that up today at the InfoWarsShop.com. And that's it for tonight's show. Please join us again tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central.